Welcome, everyone. I am your narrator, Paranormal Poet, and I will be narrating my first ever true horror story. Warning. The following content you are about to hear may involve certain phrases or words that could be triggering to some who have gone through them. Sound effects used to enhance immersion may also be of discomfort for some. This is your heads up. Viewer discretion is advised. Story 1. All I saw were boots. Hello, paranormal poet. My name is Sandra, and I had an experience I still can't wrap my head around to this day. I thought a home was supposed to be a castle to help you cope and make you feel protected. After what I saw, or rather, who I saw, I'm starting to rethink that statement heavily. This particular encounter happened in August 2022. It started out like any other day, me waking up, feeding my dogs, my cat, doing the daily chores of life. It was a long and relatively calm day. It quickly became dusk, and the work from earlier began to take a toll on me. Feeling tired but still functional, I grabbed my laptop from my room, sat down at the foot of my bed, and began to watch my favorite YouTubers. It was a calm, brisk evening, with the background noise of the trees brushing up against each other from the moderate wind. Even though life can be crushing and stressful at times, something about the forest surrounding my house allowed me to forget about my worry. But that would soon change, for the worse. It was 8.30 p.m. and beginning to get dark, but still had about 75 yards of visibility left. I was relaxing on my bed watching some videos when all of a sudden my dog and my parents' dog both started to bark. Not your typical give me attention bark, but the get off my property bark. Taken by surprise, my heart started pounding and cold sweats began running down my body Naturally, I put down the laptop, and with my voice, tried to calm them down. Usually, the soft tone would let them know it was nothing to worry about, but not this time. So I looked out my window, right where my bed is. I lifted the small curtain, and then I saw him. Someone in the tree line ahead. The green foliage and the camo of dusk may have covered his torso and head, but peeking out of the bottom, were men's heavy steel-toed boots. I felt a wave of panic begin to manifest into hives that burned my skin like needles going into you over and over. My eyes began tearing up as the boots were my only visual cue to know that it was a tall man. I quickly ran out to the living room to fetch the dogs who were on the porch still growling at him. I got them both in the house safely. I began to feel the weight of the situation because I was alone at the house. I got to my phone and frantically dialed my boyfriend's number. He was at work at that time. The phone picks up and I tell him in a panicked voice. Sensing my fear, he reassures me. I'll be home in a few minutes, Sandra. Just hang tight, okay? Protect the dogs and protect yourself. I begin to calm down, but only slightly. Interrupted by another wave of intense fear, as now the man from before steps out from the tree line, and his lanky torso was now in sight with a white and red striped pattern. He walked down my street away from the property, and that's when I noticed he didn't have a head. The darkness didn't help either. When he disappeared from sight, the terrifying ordeal was over, but the trauma it left haunts me to this day. I lay up crying that night, as that was the first time experiencing what seemed to be a stalker. But one big question is left unanswered. Why didn't he have a head? Was it a ghost? Was he in the flesh? Why was he there? I guess that's three questions, but three I don't have answers to. And I don't think I ever will. But to tell you the truth, I'm just happy he didn't try to get any closer to the house because that was one of the most life-altering experiences I've ever gone through.
Be sure to subscribe for more narrated content. This has been your narrator, Paranormal Poet.